Ancient ice is melting and our oceans are rising. That much we know. What we don't know yet precisely is how much our seas will rise here on the Sun Coast and when it will happen in our future. But fortunately, a younger generation is ready for the challenge as we continue our special series, Sun Coast 2037. Greenlee College of Art and Design students Kaylee Castle, Alyssa Concanon, and Ruzica Ivanovich are worried about the future, a future that will have to deal with sea level rise. Last month, they took part in a project called Rise and Run with Ringling Environmental Studies professor Tim Rummage. It showed beachgoers how much beach would be lost to rising seas. You say it's going to be 6 to 10 inches, which is what we're predicting for 2030. People kind of go like this and look at it and say, oh, okay. But they don't really think about how that translates horizontally, how far in on the beach that new tide line is going to come. It was rather depressing in the sense of the shock of what we would be losing and how quickly it really could happen. They're hoping this ongoing project will give people a better understanding of what our future will look like with higher seas and tides. The awareness is really important and also conversation more than action at this point. Sometimes I feel like we rely much more on the proof than the actual cause and why things are happening. If we want to stick around and have nice lives, we should definitely think about it. A National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration report reveals Florida has the most people and property at risk from sea level rise. NOAA maps show the areas most at risk in the future. Just two feet of sea level rise will have dramatic impacts here. The Dolphin Fountain at the end of Island Park will be a real water feature surrounded by the bay. Already a flooding trouble spot, some areas of Holmes Beach would be underwater with a two feet sea level rise. And that's not all. St. Armand Circle, one of the most popular spots to eat and to shop here in the Sun Coast. But in 20 years, it could also be one of the most vulnerable spots to sea level rise. NOAA's future map shows many streets there underwater. And there are other impacts. New College of Florida's Marine Lab director says a seawall will not protect your property from even a modest rise in sea level. It's not just what you see against your seawall, it's what you see under your seawall. And in that sense, you're going to have a push, a hydrological push of the seawater against the fresh water underneath that seawall. So you're going to start to see portions of your lawn that come up to the seawater wall die because they've got their roots in salt. Generally speaking, with variations based on the elevation of Siesta and Lido, there will be no beaches as we know beaches by 2035, 2040. David Houle is a futurist in residence at Ringling College who's trying to convince people sea level rise is inevitable. A conversation on Gulf Coast Florida should be what does a post beach economy look like? Because if we don't start thinking about that, then it will come around and we won't know what to do. We've got great culture, we've got a great lifestyle. So how do we want to protect what we want if there's no beaches. Our future generations are hopeful that conversation will begin soon. It's a very defeatist topic, but it's something that needs to be communicated nowadays in order for us to find a solution. Just to be clear, the two foot example we showed in those NOAA maps are the extreme of what we could see in 2037, but they do show the area's most vulnerable spots. And if you'd like to see those maps and check out where you live, NOAA's sea level rise visualiz visualizations are really fascinating to look at. We put a link to them on our website. Just look for this story at mysuncoast.com.